this can be a little bit different type of project uh, from what I typically do, so I thought I'd just share this with you. What you see in the video right now is a small paint booth or an exhaust booth, basically. I actually made this uh, maybe 35 years or so ago. It was originally made for painting uh, model railroad models. I used to be quite uh, heavily into model railroading. I haven't been as active in it in the last 10 or 15 years as I used to be. I still have my layout in the basement of my house. But this paint booth was made so that I could, uh, and it is actually a previous home where I had this installed. Uh, I made it so that I could paint my own models in the basement year round. And it really hasn't been used at all uh, in, in, again, probably close to 15 years. So it was just sitting in the basement of my current home where I live now. And I thought, well, maybe I could repurpose it for painting uh, motorcycle items, you know, part of my projects when I have to wet coat. The real advantage for this, of course, is in the wintertime. And since I do live in Michigan, and by now many of you have probably seen the video I shot uh, looking out the window talking about our recent polar vortex weather. I'm not exactly sure what that term means, but media has been talking about it. Uh, I thought, well, since I'm limited to, uh, because of the weather, I can't paint outside. And typically during the warm season here in Michigan, which is, oh, you get in late April to early May through probably mid to late October, you might get into November if you get some nice days that you could paint outside, wet coat paint outside. But I'll repurpose this maybe and use it in my shop. So I just literally a few days ago dragged it up the stairs of the our house, brought it out here, and now I'm preparing to set it up to be able to use it in my shop to wet coat. And it's, it's basically uh, just a mini um, spray booth. There you can see the exhaust motor. That is, by the way, a sparkless uh, approved more designed to handle volatile solvents. I ordered that uh, at work through our maintenance department and they looked up the right kind of motor for me again many years ago. So that is a safe motor to use with solvents. The hole you see there is for the exhaust. You can see the exhaust pipe fits down in there and I'll show you exactly how that works. You can see this flange or collar right here that's plastic and I just got it clamped. That just is a slip fit down like that. And then the other end gets exhausted outside. This is aluminized. This is not plastic, by the way. I'm going to have to make an exhaust uh, system for this, this unit. This is, this is a brand new dryer, aluminum dryer vent hood right here I picked up a few days ago. I took a piece of plywood. This is just an inexpensive piece of plywood. This again is part of that uh, crate I got uh, along with my mini mill a few years ago packaging. I used a hole saw to cut a four inch hole in it so that this exhaust hood can fit through like that and then connect to the other end of the uh, aluminum tubing. Since my windows in my shop slide uh, horizontally back and forth to the side, I cut this piece of plywood to, to just fit when I open the window I can put this temporarily in place and pull the window back up against it and it will snug it up nice and square. I'll have this exhaust hood through like this and then of course I'll have the other end of the exhaust hose attached to the vent hood. Then I can temporarily use the spray booth and uh, when I'm not using it, pull this out of the window, slide the window shut. And even if it's bitter cold out like it is today, I'll minimize my heat loss and I'll be painting inside where it's warm.
this is a little bit different perspective of the spray booth. This is this is the front. Obviously, this is where you spray into it that way. You can see the power cord, the yellow power cord off to the side. I originally had it set up for an airbrush, which you can see the the reddish orange airbrush here. Not sure I'll need that much for my motorcycle projects and other things, but I'm going to leave it mounted there that if I ever need to use it, I can. The back of the spray booth just has a furnace filter that I cut the size to fit into that opening. The only concern I have about this is that it might be a little bit too small. For my uh, typical work, this might be a little tight, so we'll see how that works. I'm going to be retiring in about five or six months, and I'll have a little bit more time on my hands, so I might just make a whole new one using uh, the basic design, but simply fabricate a new one out of plywood, but enlarge it a bit to allow me to accommodate larger parts. There is a fluorescent light fixture up above that you can't see from this perspective, but I do have a light in there as well. What I'm going to do is put this on a temporary table, which I have. In fact, the table is right there. You can see it's folded up right now, leaning up against my, my mill, or one of my mills. I'll probably put wheels on that table so that I can wheel it around and then if I want to I could even move it into my other storage barn and get it out of the way when I don't need it. I haven't figured out the engineering yet for the wheels but uh, that will be probably one of my next steps after I get this uh, exhaust hood rigged up and set up the way I want it. So there's a basic setup. I haven't used it yet. You can see it's very snowy and cold outside. I had to shorten the aluminum ducting a bit to make it fit right. It was just too long. The duct tape that I currently have holding the seams together will be replaced eventually with aluminized uh, duct tape that's designed for this. this. This tape really isn't designed for this application, even though it's called duct tape. But it's, there's better tapes to use for this kind of application. You can see the filter. The furnace filter right there. I just got it screwed into, into the four corners. It's replaceable. Uh, the light is on right now in there. It's a little bit dim, so I'll probably end up replacing that light with a modern LED type of under cabinet light that's from the early mid 80s. It's just a fluorescent bulb. The legs are from a hardware store. The tabletop. The printer tabletop. My employer makes office furniture, so it's pretty easy for me to get rejects. There you can see the chair that I sit at when I do the spray painting. That also is from my employer. I mean, that chair is probably pushing 40 years old now. It works great. Got casters, it's vinyl, it's easy to clean. It's just a plastic or fiberglass upholstered shell chair. I'll get around back and show you a little bit closer view of the ducting. Here's an up close look at the blower motor, exhaust motor, aluminum flexible ducting that goes up to the dryer vent, which goes outside. And you can, I think, you'll see the tip of it right there. You can see the plywood is just captured right now in the window frame. Not terribly well insulated, but it doesn't need to be. Just kind of get in and get out, get your painting done, let the blower run for a few minutes, and when you're done, just remove it. That extra blue filter, by the way, is just a spare piece of filter material. There you can see the screen I took out of the window so that I could fit the plywood in. The plywood's got a little bit of a bow to it, so I might end up putting some stiffeners on there eventually. I'm not sure, but maybe. There's the little compressor regulator 
moisture trap for the for the airbrush. Again, I'm not sure how often I'll use that. There's the on and off switch. For the blower. And this is a power cord that goes to the fluorescent light underneath right now. Normally in use I would uh, lay little newspapers here to catch the overspray. And you can see there's a little bit of overspray from when I used it last, which is years ago. So I'll have to replace that newspaper. A couple things, as I mentioned, I am going to address that. One is the tape on the ductwork. I'll replace that with the appropriate type of tape. I'm thinking about replacing the under cabinet light with a more modern and brighter LED. Have to line the platform on the bottom with newspapers yet. And eventually I might just remake it, make a new one probably, essentially. Make it a little bit bigger so that I have a little bit more room to maneuver. To give you a little sense of scale, you can see I put uh, one of the Yamaha YL1 left side cover, engine cover in there to get a sense of how big the current cabinet is. And it'll work for a part of that size. I have a turntable around somewhere, probably in the basement that I use for model railroad work. But I have to go fish out, see if I can find it so that I could sit there and just spin the part and spray it without having to Figure, figure out another way to accommodate turning of the part. I might end up uh, seeing if I could find that or come up with an, another one. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, any questions, comments, thoughts, let me know. And as usual, thanks for watching.